received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had a, only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you for your truth today, Lord. I thank you for all that you're getting ready to do tonight, Father God. And I thank you for uh, using me, Father God, and let my words be your words, Father God. Don't let anything come out of me that be of me tonight, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I want to continue reading here. I must get down to verse 49. <clears throat> While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he, when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and, and called, called to her, saying, Maiden, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Oftentimes, we get distracted by the cares of this life. And what I mean by that is life just seems to happen sometimes. Have you ever received a phone call or some news of something happening that just shook your world? It seems that in those times is when everyone has the exact advice they think you need. You ever notice that? Something happens and everyone wants to give you the, some advice that really doesn't pertain to what you're going through? Because they really don't know what you're going through, do they? They have an outside appearance of what you're going through, but they don't really see what's going on on the inside. And you realize in that moment that life just turned on you. It seems that in those times is when everyone is telling you what they want you to hear, but it's not really what you need to hear. So here we have a father that is absolutely grasping for the last straw, that final plea of hope, this Jesus that uh, has the power to heal made it back to his town. Jairus comes to Jesus broken, unashamed, and without dignity or pride. And Jesus accepts his plea, his request. And he says, I'm going to go with you, Jairus. It's going to be fine, is what he's telling. So excited on his way home, knowing that the master was going to heal his daughter, then out of nowhere, distraction comes. Have you ever been on a mission trying to get something done, and someone shows up? They want to talk to you for an hour about nothing, right? It's something, it's something to them, obviously, but to you, you have to get this job done that you're working on, and it's really just kind of taking up your time. Don't get me wrong. There's a time for that. There's a time to be courteous and stop what you're doing, but in the serious matters, you really need to just get it done. So here's Jerry is trying to get Jesus through the mob to his daughter before it's too late. When all of a sudden, Jesus is interrupted. And the parade comes to a halt. And he yells out, who touched me? Who can relate to this? When you're going through a trial, every minute seems like an hour. An hour seems to last for days. It feels like that anyways. I remember we were in the hospital for four months, and every day it was a trial. We didn't know what day it was. We forgot what time it was. You're looking at the clock. You're looking at the calendar. Where are we at now? Those times of trials, kind of your, your world stops. Everybody else's world is still revolving, but your world is stopped staying still. Have you ever felt forgotten? Here, Jarius. Okay, Jesus seems to have focused on this lady now. And Jairus has seem, seemingly forgotten here. 
Have you ever felt forgotten? Maybe a lunch date that fell through, a phone call that never came, uh, someone walking out on you, or maybe a, a loss of a loved one. It's in those times that we can feel most alone and at our weakest with no hope. No matter what you're going through, you always need to listen for the voice of God to direct your, your path. Amen? Here's Jarius left standing there while Jesus is focused on this lady. Jarius knows that his time is limited, and then comes the word, your daughter's dead. Don't trouble the master any longer. All his hope is gone. All his dreams are crushed. Now, the Bible doesn't say exactly how long it was before Jesus responded to this negative report. It could have been immediately, or it could have been just moments later. We want to hear the here and now. We want the answer now. What can you do for me now? But sometimes Jesus wants us to be patient. What kind of faith would I have if I never had to desire or wait for anything? I wouldn't have to use much faith at all, now would I? But the Bible does say that as Jesus was still speaking, the news of her death came. But when Jesus heard, when he heard, he didn't just say, it's going to be okay. He didn't say that eventually she's going to get better. He said, fear not and believe only, and she shall be made whole. He didn't say the sickness was going to pass. He said she's going to be made whole, which means complete. Most times we look at our situations and see no possible way, and we want to throw in the towel and give up. But Jesus is telling us, fear not, only believe. Even if it seems there is no end in sight, you've got to know that Jesus is in the midst, amen? Finally, Jarius arrives at his house with Jesus, where the mourners are already wailing over this little girl that is laying there lifeless. And Jesus says to them, weep not, for she is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed him to scorn, the Bible says, and Jesus put them all out of the room. Hmm. Sometimes we have to evaluate our relationships in life. God's calling us to draw near to him. We can't afford to draw away from him. He's saying, just believe and you shall be made whole. Now, when Jesus took hold of this little girl's hand and she and, and said, arise, she immediately sat up. We have to be careful not to let people talk us out of the promise of God. The promises of God are always yes and amen. He could have listened to his friends and his neighbors and lost out on the promise. But he believed in Jesus and the promise came to pass. Amen. God's people were given a promise all throughout Old Testament scripture. Acts 2, Jesus filled an entire room of sold out believers with his spirit. And they were all filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They were accused of being drunk. And Peter preached the message to the accusers, and they believed and they asked the question, what shall we do? And in verse 38 of Acts, or chapter 2, Peter said, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This promise shall be for you, your children, and as far off as the Lord our God shall call. They could have believed all the other naysayers around there, all the other doubters but they believed the word of the Lord, and they were all filled. The Bible says on that day, about 3,000 souls were added to the church. 3,000 people were made whole that day. That was the message then, and it's still the same today. Amen? He's calling, saying, fear not, just believe. Who's ready to be made whole tonight? Who's willing to step out and just believe? I want to close with this if the musicians would come. I haven't, uh, I don't talk about this much because it's, it's a little, makes me want to cry sometimes. It's a little embarrassing. And, uh, but sometimes you just got to use the word of your testimony. I wasn't raised 
in church. I wasn't raised in this. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even aware that a true God really existed. I was raised on the outskirts of Detroit in a not so good part of town. I have seen some things, some things that I don't even want to tell my kids about. I don't talk to them about it because I don't want to put that in their mind. I've been, uh, I've been in and witnessed some really bad relationships, and I have ended up on in some really uh, bad addictions. I was on the downside of a bottle. One day, I found myself. You see, yourself is your worst enemy sometimes. You can run, and you can run, and you can run. But one day, you're going to have to face yourself. So there I was. I found myself with nothing left, no hope. No vision, no dreams. And if you've ever been there in that, in that time where you have no hope, no vision, no dreams, then I don't have to tell you what's coming next. I don't have to tell you what your next move is. I don't know where it came from, or I don't even know how this got there. But as I was sitting there contemplating my next move, I heard a voice tell me, fear not. Only believe. <clears throat> I petitioned God that day. I don't know where, how it came. I don't even know where I got the words. But I said, God, if you're real, if you're true, then prove yourself to me, and I'll serve you all the days of my life. I was never taught that. I didn't know where that came from. And then I heard him again, fear not. Fear not, just believe. And all of a sudden, I felt like there was hot oil being poured over me. And that next move never came. I believed what God was speaking to me that day. So my question is to you, fear not and just believe or you can walk away. It's your choice. I can't make the choice for you. The pastors can't make the choice for you. You have to, between you and God, fear not, just believe. I'm not going to give an official altar call, but I'll turn it over to pastor. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand. You know, thinking about brother morgan's you're giving his testimony we everyone in this room has a story you know a lot of times we invite people to come to church and they they say oh, i'm not a i'm not, I, I wouldn't fit in i'm not a church goer i'm not a church guy or gal or whatever and or or they say something like, ah, you don't know where i've been <laughs> and i want to tell them and sometimes i do tell them you don't know where we've been Everyone in this room has a story. Where Brother Murray is telling about a, a, a place and time in his life when he's lost no hope. And I, and, I, and I remembered, I don't even tell this as my testimony, but during the time of my life when, when, when the hours were, were days, literally, I remember at night, my family was deteriorated around me, gone. I didn't know what happened. I blinked, and all of a sudden, my whole life was turned upside down. And I remember looking at the clock and watching the clock turn from 3 o'clock to 3.01 to 3.02. And I sat and stared at it. And literally, it felt like a lifetime between one minute to the next. That was the night I got the gun, and I held it in my hand. When you get to a place when you just lost all hope, it, it can never get any better than this. I didn't hear any voices. I don't remember. But I came to my senses at least, put the gun down. I was like, that was dumb. But it's still, 
people get there. People get desperate. People get to a place. And I'm just telling, I, I want to share that with you because, you know, ah, you're the preacher. You got it all together. Man, there's been a time I didn't have it together. But then we found God. And I used to not be a church guy. <laughs> but now I can't wait to get to church, man. Because this is where my salvation was. This is where I found my hope. This is where I found God. This is where I found my salvation. This is where I found peace and joy and fulfillment and everything that we look for in a bottle or in a needle or whatever. We find it here. And this is the reason why I've been coming back now for 15 years now. I can't stay away from Jesus. Praise God. Every chance we get, we plug in. So I want to bow your heads here tonight. You pray your prayer to the Father here today. And you ask Him your prayer. Say, God, I need to hear your voice tonight.